If I can't get to a tourist destination in person, can I at least write an iPhone app that'll take me there so I can see it? That was a question Lizzie Siegel posed in a recent Twilio blog post. She used Flyover Kit to build an iPhone application that gives flyovers of really cool popular tourist locations. Let's build that app right now. We'll start inside of Xcode 10 and I'll click create a new Xcode project. I'm going to pick the single view app template and hit next. I'm going to name this flyover app and leave everything else as its defaults and hit next again. Pick a folder for your project to go to and remember where you put it and head over to the terminal and head into that app directory and run pod init to create a new pod file. I'm going to open that up inside of nano. You can use whatever text editor you want, but I'm just going to change the line here. Uh, underneath pods for flyover app, I'm going to add pod flyover kit. We're going to use flyover kit version at least 1.2.0. Give it a save and run pod install to install a dependency and then open up that uh, flyover app.xc workspace file back up into Xcode. Head under flyover app and open up viewcontroller.swift. We're going to import flyover kit and map kit into our view controller as well as coming down here and adding the mk map view delegate to our view controller all right now let's head into our storyboard and set up our ui we're going to need three controllers here the first thing i'm going to bring in is a map view and just drop it somewhere near the top of the screen and then i'm going to pull in a button and a label we'll pull the label in first and just drag it into the middle and then grab the button and drag it in just above the label. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these and I'm going to embed them inside of a stack view and stack them vertically. So just head down to this button down here and say embed in stack view. Now it's created a stack, stack view and I'm going to reposition it so that it stretches to the top and bottom margins of the safe area. So first I'll set up the top area and then the bottom area drag that down to the bottom and then I'm going to head in and set these pin constraints using this here so add new constraints I'm going to add zero to the left and right margins so add those and then I'm also going to add a zero and a 20.5 these are just the standards to the safe area constraints to the top and bottom excellent next we need to go into the stack view set the alignment to fill that'll stretch everything horizontally distribution to fill we'll space everything out and set the spacing to eight so everything lines up using default spacing then i'm going to pick the label and center it then we're just going to want to set some settings on the map view uh, having to deal with how it fills up space in the vertical direction so that's going to be the hugging and compression properties we want to set the verticals to 249 so that they're less than the button and the label so that the map view takes up all of the vertical space uh, that it needs after the button and label are the sizes they want to be Next, pick the button. Uh, I'm just going to change the name of the button, uh, the label of the button, so it says click me, exclamation point. Uh, and then we're going to change the uh, font. I'm going to pick the headline font, make it a little bit bigger and bold. Uh, then we're going to pick the label, and I'm going to change its type to title one to make it nice, big, and bold and centered up. Uh, and you'll see how the UI adjusted because now the label's a little bit bigger, so it shrunk the map instead of shrinking anything else. That has to do with the vertical properties that we set on the map view. Next, click on the view controller and embed it in a navigation controller. This gives us a nice title. Click on the title of the new navigation controller and check off prefers large titles. This is just a preference. I think this looks nice. We're going to call this tour the world. You'll see that nice big title pop in on the UI. Excellent. Uh, click back in the navigation controller and I'm going to change the color of the large titles to this orange. And I'm going to change the button as well to that same color. You can make these whatever you want. I just think this looks nice. Next, select the label. We're going to change the default text of the label. Instead of saying label, it'll say visit a new place exclamation point. We want to encourage the user to click that click me button that's right above it. And that's all for our UI. We can test it out. Go down to view as and hit landscape. And you'll notice it looks pretty much the same. So it's going to work in a variety of different configurations from iPad to iPhone, portrait to landscape. Okay, open up the assistant editor so you've got the code next to your storyboard and control drag out from the map view over to the code to create a map view outlet. We'll do the same for the button and for the label. When you do it on the button, you've got to pick outlet instead of action. We'll call that location button. We're not going to use that in this video, but there will be a follow-up video that will need it. 
Uh, and then we're going to do that same thing for the label and we'll call it place label. So we got map view, location button, and place label. Then you're also going to want to control drag from the button to create an action for when it is tapped. And we're just gonna call that location button clicked. All right, now's an excellent time to test the app for the first time just to make sure everything is working. So I'm gonna hit the build and go and the phone will launch up and we can check it out. I'm testing this on my iPhone 10 and we've got a map that's loading in with the default map view and we're good to go. So let's head back to our code. We'll go back into the view controller and we're gonna head down here and create a function called map setup where we're gonna set some properties on our map view. The first thing that we're gonna set here is the map type and we're going to set this to hybrid flyover, which gives us a satellite view of the map with some flyover data for buildings uh, where available. Then we're going to set the show buildings to true so we can see all of those buildings in the flyovers. And just to make sure, even though we've got some default properties here, we're gonna set is zoom enabled to true as well as is scroll enabled equal to true. Okay, now we'll go back up into view did load and call self dot map setup to set up our map. And this is a good time to do another sanity check just to make sure the map type is working and that we can scroll and zoom and all of that sort of thing. Uh, so I'll run the app again and everything looks good. That is definitely the satellite hybrid flyover view. We can tell because it's like on a globe with a little bit of a pitch. So that's cool. Uh, now we're gonna go down here and create a dictionary of locations that we can fly over. And these come from the flyover awesome place enum that comes with flyover kit. So Flyover Awesome Place has a ton of different spots that you can check out uh, inside of the map kit map. Uh, and all you have to do is use this enum to grab one of those places. We're gonna start in a dictionary where the key is a nice display name for our UI. So we got Statue of Liberty, we got New York, we're gonna have the Googleplex and uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, a bunch of other places that you probably don't wanna sit here and watch me type. Then we're gonna head down into that location button clicked function uh, that we pulled over from the storyboard. And we're gonna pull a random element out of that location dictionary. And then we're gonna set up the camera using flyover camera, passing in the map view, and then creating a configuration using flyover camera dot configuration. In here, we'll pass in the duration. It's gonna be a six second duration at an altitude of 300 meters, at a pitch of 45 degrees, and a heading step of 40. Okay, so with our camera setup, we can actually start the camera. So we'll call camera.start, that'll kick off the flyover. Uh, and the flyover is gonna fly over a point and that's going to be the random elements value. Then to stop the camera, we wanna wait six seconds. So we'll use Grand Central Dispatch's dispatch queue. On the main queue, we'll call async after. And the deadline is gonna be now uh, plus six seconds. So we'll call dot now plus dot seconds and pass in six. So six seconds from now, we'll execute some code and we're gonna call camera stop. So that'll stop the flyover animation. We have one last thing to do and that's to set the text of the place label uh, equal to the value, uh, the key from the dictionary, uh, which would be the name of the place that we're doing the flyover for. And excellent, now that we have all of that done, we can run the application one more time to test it out and make sure that it works. So we'll run the application and I'll hit that click me button down below and we'll see what our first place is. Oh, it's Apple HQ. So that's Apple, Apple HQ loading in. And I'll tap it one more time just to make sure it's working. And we get the Golden Gate Bridge and you can zoom in and pan around and, uh, and check it out for yourself. But that's basically all there is to flyover kit. We'll have a follow up on this video real soon, adding some more features to this. So hit subscribe so you know when it comes out. Until then, I'm out of here.